and welcome to Emmanuel Church. Whether you're here with us in the sanctuary or you're with us online, we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, that you're welcome here. Please quiet your hearts, your minds, and your conversations as we, listening, as we listen to the centering moment. Good morning. Please join us in our responsive call to worship. Friends, let us search for the way. Jesus is the way. The way where? The way to heaven. We need to know the way there. Jesus, the way that will direct us. Do we have a map? Follow Jesus. Please join us for our opening praise songs and get a little rowdy if you want to. Will you pray with me? We gather this day, O Lord, as people who seek your guiding love. Open our hearts and make us ready to stand firm in the faith that leads to loving service. Create a new people in this place so that your love may surround all who enter here. For we ask these things in Jesus' name as we pray. And remember the way the Lord's Prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture today is from the Gospel of John, in chapter 14, verses 1 through 14, which can be found on your pew Bibles on page 938 that I forgot to put in the bulletin. <clears throat> Hear the word of God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to my, uh, I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you will may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't, do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever, have, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in, dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works, because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. You're sitting outside on a beautiful Sunday morning in May. A woman comes along and asks for directions to a manual church. You give her directions and she's on her way. What if she had stopped by my house and asked for directions? The directions would have been very different, but she still would have gotten to a manual. Our journeys differ but our goal is still the same, Jesus Christ. Jesus is called the way, the way to God, the way to heaven, the way of peace, and the way to salvation. 
He's also called the way that anchors and centers us when we're feeling off-centered or out of sync with our faith. Let's take a look at the characters in today's gospel. First of all, Thomas, we learn so much from Thomas. He asks Jesus, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Again, Thomas gives us an opportunity to hope in our own challenges of faith. Here he is. He has been with Jesus during his public ministry. He has heard Jesus preach. He has heard him teach the, the disciples and seen him perform miracles. Yet he cannot grasp that Jesus is the way to the Father. But Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. This gives me hope because if Thomas doesn't know the way, who is a first-hand witness of Jesus and his teachings, then when I lose my way, I know I can rely on Jesus to show me the way back to him. Sometimes during a crisis of faith, it's difficult to reach out to God for help. You see, it's not about a physical place that Jesus is talking about. It's at the place of relationship with him. One thing that troubles me and challenges my faith is the commonness of senseless killing of innocent people. Did you know there have been 23 mass shootings in this week alone? There are too many who have been taken from us, but a few of them come to mind. The children and staff of Sandy Hook in Connecticut and Robb Elementary in Texas. Members, the murders of people doing their grocery shopping at Tops in Buffalo. Jewish worshipers killed at the Tree of Life congregation in Pittsburgh or the killing of individuals such as Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, or Philandro Castile, who were innocent people. These are the events that make me question God. Where are you? Little children in school, regular people getting groceries, Jewish people worshiping an innocent black people who are being slaughtered. What are you going to do to stop this, Lord? Then I realize, as mad as I am at God about this and about his not intervening, I am, in fact, going to God about it. Perhaps God says to me, well, Joanne, what are you doing? In order to answer this question, I need to turn to Jesus, who is the way and seek guidance through prayer and listening. You know, I've not heard an answer yet, but that doesn't stop me from searching with the way. Part of finding an answer to life's big questions is the ability to live in that question. Even though it's uncomfortable, we need to pray and believe that something will be shown. What is it? Joanne, that you mean by living in the question. First, in prayer, we listen. We bring our concerns to God. We bring our questions to God, and we listen. Then we have patience, because God's answer doesn't always come immediately. And then we need to let go, to let go and let God do God's work. Thomas takes Jesus' words so literally. The teaching that follows Jesus' question gives us a phrase that we hold on to in our journey with Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you know me, you will know the Father also. To know Jesus is to know the one who sent Jesus. He is the way to God because Jesus is is of God. That's part of the mystery of our faith. 
Jesus is the way to God because Jesus is of God. One person of the blessed trinity. So Thomas's question gives us one more jewel in our faith. Jesus is the way. Philip is the other character that appears in today's gospel. Still confused, he says to the Lord, show us the Father and we shall be satisfied. Philip doesn't get it either. It must have been frustrated for the human Jesus to hear these questions and statements from those who have been with him so long. But Jesus doesn't give up. He doesn't judge them. The gift that Philip's inquiry gives us is a glimpse into the divinity of Jesus when he says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. If these words would have been heard by the Pharisees, they would have accused Jesus of blasphemy way before he was brought to trial. This is one of the most outright admissions of Jesus and his divinity that we have in scripture. And Jesus also makes a promise to the disciples. He will do whatever the disciples ask in his name with all of their faults, with all of their failings, with all of our faults and all of our failings. He loves us as his own. He is the way to all we need in life. If we need courage, we go to Jesus. If we need knowledge, we go to Jesus. If we need answers, we go to Jesus. We have Thomas and Philip to thank for this confidence. They showed their weakness, and Jesus gave them the strength they need to go to Jesus, who is the way. He will do so with us as well as we live in the question. So let's address this idea of living in the question a little further. As I said, it's uncomfortable. We live in an age where people ask or say, just ask. Now, that's Jesus' way. But what about today? Who do we ask for information? Google, Alexa, Siri, OK? We have so much information at our fingertips that there really isn't a reason not to have an answer to our questions, right? Wrong. Not exactly. The thing is, the internet can give us facts and theories, but can't give us the roadmap to the heart of God. You can probably find the answers to many theological questions, but this is a journey of faith. Faith in Jesus is the roadmap. It means that sometimes through prayer and meditation that we have to wait for God to answer. It might take a few hours or days or years. Are we willing to wait with an open heart for God's inspiration? What if an answer comes back that tells us there is nothing we can do? This is God's realm. Do we feel deflated, encouraged, or flat by that answer? It's hard to let go of control. Yet, isn't that what we're called to do in today's gospel? To trust that Jesus is the way, that if we know him, we know the Father. Jesus is the promise keeper. He makes many promises at the beginning of this reading. He's going to prepare a place for us and will return to get us and bring us with him. Not in any place does Jesus say, you must find the way on your own because he tells us we will know the way. Jesus has promised to bring us there. The way is through relationship with Jesus, fidelity to his teachings, and sharing them with others. This is the answer. Jesus will give us what we need when we need it, but not always when we want it. He knows our desires and needs before we express them. 
if this is true, then why does Jesus make us wait? Why doesn't he give us a clear-cut answer about how to stop gun violence in our nation? There's always something to learn in letting go of control and waiting for God to move. It's not in our hands. We can learn patience, experience new insights during a time of waiting, and maybe have a clearer vision given us in that time. Have a clearer vision to think about things differently. There's a real freedom in not having to control, but in turning over the control to God. Jesus is the way, the miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. All we need to do is wait until we're given the inspiration to act. This is easier said than done. But if we can get out of our way and into God's way, then we can act in response to Jesus, who is the way. Lord God, help us to rely on you with the big questions of life, to live in the question with the confidence that you are the one who has the answers. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we praise your name this morning, the morning of the first day of the week. All the various conditions are in place, and the time has been given for us to offer you praise and prayer and to listen to the word of life in this place. We seek to follow the way of Jesus presented to us, and we ask your healing and grace upon the following. We ask for prayers of continued healing for Catherine Sweet and the family as she recovers from a broken leg. For Samuel, who is 35 years old and paralyzed due to an accident. We pray for healing for David and Clem. We pray for continued comfort, strength, and love for Barbara and Sonia as they continue with their cancer treatments. Be with them, Lord. Help them to know that you are there with them as they try to heal. We have asked for prayers for those dealing with mental health issues and living with dementia and Alzheimer's. And Lord, we pray for their families and caregivers as this is a very difficult time for them as well. We ask for prayers for all of those who are impacted by war, natural disasters and social injustice around the world and in our community. Help them, Lord, to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Inspire those who can make changes to do so. We also pray for those recovering from colds, cancer treatments, medical procedures, as well as broken spirits, hearts, and homes. Enter their hearts, Lord. Help them to know your presence and give them comfort. We pray for the victims of gun violence, and we pray for their families, Lord, who are left with an emptiness that we can't even imagine. We pray for Mercedes. It has been seven years today that her mother passed away. We pray her mother is at peace and pray Mercedes finds the strength one needs today. She needs today. For Leslie Kelly, Lynn's sister, and her medical challenges. Lord, you know what's on our hearts. You know those for whom we have not voiced. We ask, them to be, ask you to be with them as well, and with us in our challenges 
be that physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. And we ask all of this, Lord, through your name. Amen. At this time, we will invite those forward who are going to take up our offering. God gives us good things, so let us give good things to God. Let us bring gifts that can be like water in dry places. May these resources be used to testify to the goodness of God. Amen. And you can see on the screens there are many ways to give. Um, you can do so through the internet or by mail, but you can also do so with your time and talents. The morning offering will now be received. hearts and prayers. May our sins be cleansed. God gives good things to us, and so now we return good things to God. Holy God, we are not able to love you with all of our hearts and love our neighbor as ourselves. 
We want to be forgiven, but sometimes we cannot forgive others. Please give us the grace of forgiveness so that we can get back on our feet today and forgive others as well. Please give us your way. Lead us to the new life that we are offered. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God hears our prayers. May our sins be cleansed and we be made as peacemakers. May God be with those who are in pain, suffering, and hardship at this moment. This is what the Lord says. I have swept away your offense like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Amen. Merciful God, as sisters and brothers in faith, we recall anew these words and acts of Jesus Christ. Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body. In the same way, Jesus took a cup. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink it, all of you, in remembrance of me, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Boldly, let us say what we believe. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless this fruit. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table so our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Jesus in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Jesus gave to us. These are the gifts of the people of God. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome at this table. These are the gifts of God prepared for you. The table is set and all things are ready. Come, receive Jesus.
Let us now partake. This is the body of Christ, which was broken for you. Take and eat. blood of Christ poured out for you. Take and drink. We give you thanks, Lord, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith that we may grow closer to you as we feast on the good things that you have given to us that will draw us closer to your loving presence. Amen. Good morning again. Uh, just a couple of announcements I'd like to highlight. Uh, one is uh, that all are welcome to join for a brief coffee hour after church right downstairs in our fellowship hall. And today, the Black River St. Lawrence Association will be having um, a semi-annual meeting uh, here at 2 o'clock in Emmanuel in Watertown. I am up in Emmanuel Messina. If you're up there, stop by. Um, it'll be a hybrid type of meeting. Uh, the topic of uh, discussion will be the country of India and their nationalism and how it affects uh, what Americans should know about what's going on over there with experts that speak on that topic. Um, our community garden kicks off tomorrow night at 5.30 out there in raised bed gardens. Um, God provided some rain last week, so now it's up to us to plant some seeds. <clears throat> All are welcome. And um, this Thursday, the Christianity Breakfast Group will be meeting by Zoom at 6.30 a.m. And I'll be sending that link out to anybody who would like to join us. As promised, I'm going to tell you what this sheet of paper is that's titled, My Dickie's Favorite Things. On the 20th of May at 10 a.m. here at Emanuel, we will be remembering Dickie Smith, and um, we hope that you can come. So these are a few things that Dickie likes, like chocolate cake and beef soup and vegetable soup and pizza. What we'd like is if you can find a non-perishable, um, like uh, cookies, he likes cookies, any kind of cookie. Um, you can get those, um, Packages of cookies that um, in the bakery aisle that just you just need to add water to And we're going to collect them on the day of the um, Memorial service and we're going to have a display downstairs um, In honor of Dickie with all his favorite things and then when everything is over we are going to donate it to the food pantry so um, in his honor Thank you. You will note at the bottom of the list, he like bush light and uh, vodka. You can't do that here. <laughs> I should have crossed it up when I did it. Um, and he liked dill pickles. I don't know if that's on the list or not. Um, Circle four is meeting on June 9th at Applebee's for lunch. Okay, high noon, high noon at Applebee's for their uh, summer picnic. Linda, are you going to say anything about yesterday? You want me to say something about you? Stephanie. 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 Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Okay, so yesterday it was awesome. We all met at Mary and Linda's and we made box garden boxes for Summit Village so they could have gardens there. And it was great. And what was that stuff? I would really love to do that. Well, it just so happens that Tuesday we have a missions meeting. 
So it would be great to see you guys there at 6.30. Or you have an idea? Well, my email is on the back of the flyer, or whatever it's called. I'm, I'm up here too long. I'm starting to shake. OK. <laughs> it's on the back of the bulletin, so just email me. The end. <laughs> This is the first week of uh, the new May-June upper rooms. They're at the front and back of the church, if anybody hasn't gotten one or knows someone who might enjoy a meditation in that regard. Are there any other announcements? I have one. Okay. Also, at the semi-annual meeting today, uh, we will be voting on new bylaws for the association. We have been known as the Black River Association for many, many years. And as you know, churches have um, have dwindled, membership has dwindled, some churches have closed. The Essex Association on the Lake Champlain side of the state has had the same problem. So we've been talking for a couple of years about merging. And today we'll be voting on the bylaws for the North Country Association. So you won't hear us refer to the Black River St. Lawrence Association anymore. We will become the North Country Association, as long as the bylaws are approved. 